Oh, hello, Internet. It's us, Andrew Andrew. Hi, Andrew Andrew. Starting the season off seeing Follies, Follies at the Marquee Theater. I have to say, I have sort of a checkered history with this theater. But tonight we're seeing Folly starring Bernadette Peters. Who's um, kind of amazing. I'm just stoked. Even if the show's a stinker, I'll be excited to see her. It takes place in an old theater that's like an abandoned theater and that they're, they're gonna, about to close they're down. they're going to demolish it. It's going to be interesting to see how it ages. And they don't do this very often. They don't do this very often. No, it's rarely performed, I think. Well, so this is a real treat then. It started off at Lincoln Center. No, Kennedy Center. It started off at a center named after a president that was assassinated. And then it moved over here to New York to the Marquee Theater. Do, oh, here's a tidbit. The Players Club. The private... We're not going to... Okay, go ahead. All right, fine. We won't no, use... no. No, it's good. Okay. Andrew Andrew Follies at the Marquee Theater. We'll see you after the first act. We're looking forward to Bernadette. It's a theater that's about to be destroyed and turned into a parking lot, and they're having one last big party of the old cast members of the Follies in and, the and theater to say goodbye. And the Follies, of course, were produced in between the two wars, sort of like Busby Berkeley, yeah. song and dance routines, very light fare. What, what I think is sort of in a way the predecessor to music videos. There's two couples who were all pals, and, and of course they're, they're now married, but incredibly discontented with their lives, and they're, they're looking back and thinking about how wonderful it was. And Lots their lives. of regrets looking to the past. It's slow and sentimental, and the specters of their former selves hover about them in this ominous, almost morbid fashion. I started off kind of off, but the more it goes on, I'm kind of warming up to it. Some amazing song and dance, if you like traditional 20s, 1930s song and dance, tap dancing. I don't know, man. It's not really grabbing me. I, I'm having that feeling you have when you watch an old movie and you feel like people thought differently. The show is about trying to revive something else. Yeah. So it's like a triple-double revival, and I feel like it's unrevivable. I want to go back inside and see the second half. Yeah, start? yeah, go. Kind of start? Yeah, go. Okay. Second act, I kind of loved it. it just, there's a series of bizarre and hyper-real and uh, surrealistic show numbers a la Folly style that illuminate the interior workings of primary characters. Suffice to say, everyone's motivations become incredibly clear. It's not just that this had a slow start, but I think that things used to start slower. And we're used to entertainment being quicker. The backstory of the first act out of the way the, the second act starts off much more engaging. I think that has a lot to do with the attention span of our culture. Jane Maxwell sings a song about divorce that makes you want to marry her. It is um, still an ensemble cast. I mean, everyone has a number. Look, and I mean, there are some numbers. Uh, it's like almost like a Fellini movie or something. I was thinking the same thing, right? too. It's like a Fellini film. It gets you, and then it's and then it, it wraps it all up in a, like a sour candy shell at the very end with this weird, like, So what do you think? I gotta actually make a deliberation. I guess green light. Green lights. Follies at the Marquee Theater in Times Square. Two green lights. Yeah. Especially for Jan Maxwell. Yeah. Also, you know what? Bernadette, Bernadette Peters, Peters was a little bit... I wasn't... Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I wasn't. I was, I'm not burning up for Bernadette. That's for Is that what happens if you get assassinated as a standing You president? automatically you, get a theater. You automatically get a center.